As Donald Trump's tweet uh, from Afri Forum, Afri Forum's deputy CEO Ernest Rutz joins us now live from our Pretoria studios. Mr. Rutz, thank you very much indeed for your time. You know, Afri Forum has been on this international campaign against farm killings. Now you have the leader of the free world, uh, President Donald Trump, tweeting about farm killings in South Africa. What's your response? Well, obviously, we welcome, um, we welcome the, the, the reaction by the U.S. government and by the president of the USA. We believe that the situation in South Africa is very serious. And we don't, when we talk about expropriation without compensation in the first place, we shouldn't be misled by what the president says the outcome will be. You cannot simply declare what the outcome of a policy will be. If you want to determine what the outcome of a policy will be, you have to look at where it has been tried and tested repeatedly. And every single time this has been tried and tested, it has failed. But secondly, farm attacks is a serious crisis, and farm killings is a serious crisis in South Africa, and it's something that's happening disproportionately. People are being uh, tortured in disproportionate numbers. It has uh, severe consequences for South Africa at large, but it's, a, it's an issue that is being largely ignored or swept off the table by the South African government, and they deserve to be put under the spotlight for not, not reacting to this as they should have. Mm, we also have on the line, let's welcome uh, the NC's Mr. Ronald Lamula on this debate. Mr. Lamula, sir, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. What was the reaction uh, of the NC to the United States President Donald Trump's tweet about uh, the land issue here in South Africa? No, thank you very much and to the list to the viewers. Our, our view is that um, the, the, the tweet is not informed by realities in South Africa. And uh, what Afroforum is also saying is not informed by realities. Because crime in the farming communities does not only affect the white farmers, or crime does not only affect white farmers in South Africa, it affects everyone. And government has its pulse on crimes across the country. I think you have seen the Minister of Security, Peggy Taylor, is working. He's giving regular updates. And there is no evidence that crime is deliberately directed to white people. With regard to expropriation, they, all countries in the world use the expropriation instrument for various purposes, uh, for building, for public people but also for public interest. There's no country in the world where expropriation instrument is not being used. And even some of the most developed countries today that um, of the free world, like um, uh, South Korea and uh, Singapore, they've used the expropriation instrument. So it's not like um, a, a countries across the world are not aware of this. And we have repeatedly said that we are going to use this instrument through proper constitutional means, and that's why the ANC is participating in the public constitutional review process, and whatever the government is doing is in line with constitution or is in line with legislation. Even the recently, uh, what the Afro Forum leaked to the public it, it, and so forth, it, it was found that the, the department is just doing what is prescribed by the Act, and there is no basis whatsoever to say government is busy with seizing of land and procedural and so forth. Everywhere where government is doing any process of land, including the Department of Rural Development, they are doing yeah. it in line with the Restitution Act and the Constitution of the Republic. Mr. Ruiz, let me bring you into this. You've no doubt heard what uh, Mr. Lamola has said. Yesterday, the president in the National Assembly mentioned your organization by name. Uh, he said that he would like South Africans to move away from, quote unquote, this, this uh, fear psychosis that's ta currently taking place. That's uh, according to him. He says that, you know, he hit out at Afri Forum saying that. Uh, you know, what, what, what AfriForum is saying that about the ANC and, and land grabs, and they're totally against that. Don't you believe him that the ANC is totally against land grabs? Well, you know what's the big irony about what the president said yesterday is he accused AfriForum of lying, and in the same sentence, he lied about what AfriForum is saying. He said every forum shouldn't lie to the international community by saying that, that they are busy with, that the government is busy with land grabs. That's not what we said. We, 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 we've, we went to the United States and to several other countries to get international support against expropriation without compensation. Uh, Mr. Ramola talks about uh, that, that, thing, that what we say should be based in reality. Let me give you the reality. We were quoting government statistics. Mr. Ramola, your government, your government statistics say 
that there happened in the last two dec decades, there's been two farm attacks every day in South Africa, and there's been two farm murders every week in South Africa. That's your government saying that. It's not us making that up. Your deputy president has said that if white people don't voluntarily hand over their property, there would be a race war in South Africa. That's what the deputy president said. The president of this country, Mr. Uh, president Cyril Ramaphosa, said that if we take people's property, it would turn South Africa into the Garden of Eden and the ultimate pre uh, paradise. That's what he said. You refer to Singapore and South Korea, and I'm very glad that you did so, because firstly, you clearly don't know what happened in those countries, because there was, there was a land reform process, but the process was in order to strengthen private property and to get government out of the way. That's why those countries are succeeding. There are land reform uh, policies where the purpose is to strengthen uh, uh, private property, and those countries have succeeded. Then there are land reform policies where the purpose is for government to expropriate property, for the government to intervene, and for government to act as a so-called custodian. And that's what happened in, in the Soviet Union, in communist China, in, in uh, Zimbabwe and Venezuela. So there's a clear difference. So you cannot try to use Singapore and, Venez and, and uh, South Korea as examples, because that's exactly the opposite than what you are trying to do in South Africa. Mr. Roots, I want to touch on two things. Firstly, you referred to Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa as your president when you're talking to uh, Mr. Ronald Lamola. Do you not consider him uh, your president as well? Uh, and, and also, with regards to these stats, Agri uh, SA came out with these stats saying that murders have decreased uh, to the lowest levels in 20 years. They reportedly said that the farm murders decreased from 66 recorded in 2016 and 17 to 47 in 2017, 2018, where does the truth lie here, Mr. Roots? Well, yeah, those stats are wrong. Um, those stats are wrong because you can just compare what, what these but stats say. It from the, they said they, they said were they're getting it from farmers. police stats and they're also getting it from their own research yes, as well as media reports. I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to you why it's wrong, if you would give me the opportunity. They said that there were 47 farm murders. Last year, the South African police issued a statement saying there were 74 farm murders in last year. So I assume they switched the numbers around. What they also did is they provided a breakdown of um, how many farm murders happened in which provinces. You can Google it yourself. You can see they said, for example, I can't remember the exact numbers. They said, for example, there were three farm murders in the Western Cape during last year. If you do a basic Google search, you will find that there were five or six farm murders. Uh, so it's very clear that those numbers are wrong, and it's very easy to prove that they are wrong. Farm murders are not at the highest it's ever been. Uh, the highest it's ever been was in the early 2000s, but it has been increasing over the last five or six years. Mm. All right, let's rope in uh, Mr. Roots. Uh, Mr. Roots, I, 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 I beg yours. Uh, Mr. Lamola, uh, uh, talk to us about uh, uh, these sentiments from, uh, from Mr. Roots, first of all, and also maybe talk to us about why the ANC actually did not uh, react to, 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 to AFRI Forum when it did say it was going on an international stage on this very campaign, because what you said earlier on, you said that uh, their stats or, or, or their campaign is not informed by reality. Yes, it's not informed by reality, and we did react. We will have seen the, as the GSG of the ANC responded. I also read, uh, uh, wrote uh, an extensive article on what they are saying. But firstly, there is a normality and unrealistic thing that he has said, Mr. Roots, with regard to um, uh, South Korea and, um, and, 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 and Singapore. What the ANC is proposing is not to nationalize uh, the land of all these countries. We are saying we still want to allow private ownership of the land. The state should still own land for its own use, and that there should still be communal ownership of the land. So I don't know where the, Mr. Root gets it from that we want to nationalize or want the state to be the whole custodian of the land. So that's why I'm saying the president was not lying when he spoke about Afro Forum. So Afro Forum, they are pathological liars spreading malicious gossip and propaganda across the world, which is not based on reality. For example, on these issues of farm murderers and so forth, when they speak about farm murderers, they only speak about white farm murderers. They are also workers who have been murdered, who have been evicted in the farms. So it's not only about them. They are also white uh, farm owners who are across the country oppressing a, a, a black farm workers. They are evicting them on a day-to-day -day basis. As we speak now, about 4 million uh, farm workers have been evicted from their farms. And Afro Forum does not speak about this. So it's a race-based organization, which is the only one that is, uh, is spearheading race genocide and propaganda. 
So the ANC says we need to expropriate, we need to do land reform so that everyone, all South Africans must be able to participate in farming, which includes the majority of this country. And we are saying we must be able to share in the land of this country. And in that way, we'll be able to bring young, young people, women, and others who want to do farming. In reality, the current most uh, farmers are old. We need a new generation. So we need to open up farming to be able to have food security and have sustainable livelihood for our country. You can't continue to have a closed uh, 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 land ownership and farming. So it's important, it's in the interest of the country that the farm reform happens and everyone is brought. It is only then that we can build a non-racial society. But it's important for us uh, to, to also clarify that this is not only about farming. It is also about residents in the urban areas because majority of people are migrating to urban areas. They do not have places to stay. Property prices are very high. They are excluded. They can't stay anywhere. And that's why the, most of them are found in shacks. So it's important for the ANC government to deal with the apartheid special planning to bring people closer to where they work. So this process of land reform, property transformation, is also about helping people to get places of residence in urban areas. So it's not only about farming. It's not only about the agriculture. That is what is very important for Afro Forum to understand. For us to live in harmony and together, all of us need to participate in a project to build a South Africa. And you can't build a good South Africa based on lies and propaganda. Mr. Roots, do you still hold the view that white farmers are the target of racially motivated persecution? Well, firstly, Mr. Lamola, if, if you had worked for Afri Forum, we would have fired you for gross negligence. No, and no, the way in no, which you would never, uh, approach this never, issue is very symptomatic of the ANC. I did not I interrupt you when you were speaking. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. I did not I interrupt you when you were speaking. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. I did not interrupt you when you were speaking. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. Gentlemen, I did not interrupt you when you were speaking. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. Mr. Lamola, I did not interrupt you when you were speaking. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. Can you please give Mr. Rhodes a chance, gentlemen? Can you please? I did not interrupt you when you were speaking. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. All right, gentlemen. I did not interrupt you when you were speaking. Mr. Rhodes, go ahead, sir. Mr. Lamola, I'll be, I'll be with you shortly, Mr. sir. Can we Mr. just hear from Mr. Mr. Ruiz? Mr. Lamola, perhaps you should switch off his microphone no, until I finish speaking, and then you can give him a time to respond. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Ruiz, sir. Yeah, listen, the point is, the, the way in which you approach this issue is symptomatic of how the ANC approaches and the government approaches these issues, because you're making bold and sweeping statements about stuff that you clearly know nothing about. I've written a book about farm murders. I've written a book about how black people are also being attacked on farms. I've also written in the book about uh, uh, evictions of farm workers. I've written about how uh, cases where, black, where white farmers abuse black farm workers. I've written about all of those things. It's published. You can go to exclusive books and read the book. It's very daft to come on national television and to claim that AfriForum has never spoken about a topic of which we've written a book. It's available for everyone to see. We've spoken about it repeatedly. This is exactly the problem, that we're trying to have a rational debate with a government and a ruling party who clearly cannot distinguish between fact and fiction. When they, when they try to debate with someone, they just make up stuff as they go along. It's not possible to have a rational conversation. Mm. Mr. Lamola, let's, let's rope you in there. What do you say about that, that you're making stuff as you go along? But I'm looking at the papers here. Yeah, there was also an AfriForum list of uh, farmers that was uh, supposedly uh, to be expropriated. Uh, and uh, it, this list, uh, apparently nobody knows about this list. Uh, but AfriForum has it on good record that this list is being circulated around. Please talk to us about these. I think Mr. Ruth is a victim of uh, white uh, supremacy and being groomed only exclusively to represent white people. And if there is any person who, who suffers from creative fiction, it's him. Because the list you are referring to has been disproved by the department. The department said they don't have such a list which targets anyone. But what they said they have is a record of all the land claims that they have and people that they have offered um, uh, prices uh, 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 in, in accordance with what the value general has, has determined, and that is in line with the constitution, which uh, some of the farm owners have refused. And there is no way that the department can do land reform without having records, history, and archives. 
So AFRI Forum has hyped up and deliberately distorted what is the record of the department for their own political convenience. And uh, it is clear that they are not willing to build a project South Africa. They are only here to spread propaganda. They are only here to create confusion. They are only here to mobilize white South Africans against land reform. But it is good because we know that Afgri SA and many other white South Africans want to build the country with us. And that's why they came to government, they've engaged the ANC. They said we can do this together. How do we share? How do we build skills uh, and enable uh, black South Africans who want to farm? How do we help them with this and that? And there have also been many white good South Africans across the country who have also helped some of the emerging black farmers. And we welcome that. We, 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 we appreciate that input. And I think it is that kind of attitude that will help us to build a non-racial South Africa, but also to enable us to deal with food security. But it's also a good uh, thing for our country because there is no one uh, a racial group that can build the nation. And that's why the ANC has always said it's non-racial. It wants to build a country for everyone. And we really want to appreciate those white South Africans, black South Africans who are working together to do farming and who are also working together in various parts of our country. Mm -hmm. And we, do, we think that Afro Forum must also reorientate themselves to the kind of society we want to build because organizations like themselves who re still refuse that apartheid was a crime against humanity in other countries have been banned. They must be happy that in this country the constitution allows them and the ANC has always protected even their freedom of speech, even when they promote hate speech. Mm. Mr. Rhodes, maybe let me just rope you in there as well and just get your quick reaction on that. I mean, uh, particularly around the land hearings. Let's talk about how Afri Forum actually approached these. Mm. Were you part and partisan uh, of these hearings and uh, coming there with a, a vested interest to come up with solutions that were going to be justified for every South African? Yes, well, I think there are two things um, to respond to on what you've said. The first thing is we have participated in these hearings. As a matter of fact, we participated in every single one of these hearings. We've also uh, uh, submitted written um, um, submissions to Parliament, and we also applied to, to do oral presentations for Parliament, of which we haven't received feedback yet. So we are participating in the process, although we have serious uh, concerns about the uh, legitimacy of the process based mm -hmm. on a variety of things which I can elaborate on if you want me to. Um, but I, I think that the, the concern with the process here is that, that there's been so many procedural issues that we are not sure if we can take this, this process seriously. But, but the second thing is about uh, proposing certain solutions. And I think it's very simple. I, I think there are certain things that should be done. We're not against land reform in principle on, or under all circumstances, we are in favor of restitution. Uh, and there's a massive difference between restitution and expropriation without compensation or redistribution. And the difference is this. When we talk about restitution, what we are talking about is looking at the history of a particular piece of land to see what happened on that particular piece of land. Did it in fact happen that, for example, a black community lived there and they were dispossessed by the government or by white people or whoever? And if that is the case, then there has to be restitution. Then that has to be corrected. But that did not happen across the entire surface of South Africa. That did not happen. Not, not all black people were dispossessed and not all white people engaged in dispossessions. And the current situation is based on, is based on a premise that white people are criminals if they own land. You, white people cannot be a legitimate owner of land because of a bunch of racist accusations, uh, which is false. So we, we can look at restitution and say... And, and, and see what really happened and be historically accurate in our analysis. And we would support that. But this is not what the South African government is doing at the moment. But Mr. Roots, yesterday the president said that if the current land reform program continues as is with regards to the willing buyer, willing say, uh, seller, it's likely to take around a century to complete, to finalize, and will cost the state around 750 billion rand. Well... The, the problem with the current process is, is not with the farmers, it's with the government. The government has already spent 45 billion rand, no, it's, I think it's more than 50 billion by this year, more than 50 billion rand on, on land reform. And what have, they, what have they achieved? What do they have to show for that? We do know that they have four, more than 4,000 farms. 
We do know that according to government's own data, more than 90% of those farms fail. They, re they revert either to subsistence farms or to, to squatter camps or informal settlements. Um, if government had just spent all the money that they spent on the Department of Land Reform by buying up farms that open up in the market, they would have been able to buy half of the country out already. But they're, not, but they're not prepared to do that because that's a problem and that's where the ANC's problem comes in. Because if they just use that money to buy farms, then there's no opportunity or much less opportunity for corruption and for stealing state funds. So they would rather have a very bureaucratic, uh, massive government department with tenders and so forth so that they can use this opportunity for the cadres to enrich themselves. Mr. Well, so Russo, I just want to get back to this list that's causing seemingly anxiety in South Africa, the list that you have and the list mm. that you've published with regards to the farms that uh, allegedly have been earmarked for expropriation without compensation. Where did you get it from? <laughs> well, we got the list from a source which we are not able to disclose, to, to disclose but what I can tell you is I am absolutely 100% convinced and certain that this list is being circulated in the Department of Land Reform. And, and uh, claiming now that a list doesn't exist is very daft because the Minister of, of um, Land Reform and Rural Development herself recently said that they, they have already identified the farms that they wish to expropriate uh, and they don't want the owners to know. They want it to remain a secret because they don't want people to prepare for a legal challenge. That's what the Minister said. Shortly thereafter, the ANC's National Executive Committee uh, concerned or conceded that there's a list with 139 uh, farms that have been identified for expropriation purposes. And then uh, we were able to find this list, which we published. And we do know, for example, that on the list as it was published, number one and two on that list is currently being targeted for expropriation. And there's no point in saying, yes, but it's not expropriation without compensation, because they are only busy with step one. Step one is expropriation far below market value, which is exactly what they are currently doing. Step two is expropriation without compensation. You know, AgriSA was reportedly saying that there are several inaccuracies in this list. And they did say reportedly in the media that uh, it's mm. a bit irresponsible for AfriForum to publish this list. What's your response to that? Well... If there are inaccuracies in the, in the list, uh, it's not our duty to correct those inaccuracies. So the, the fact that there are, let's accept that there are inaccuracies. That's irrelevant as to whether the list is legitimate or not. As a matter of fact, given the fact that there are so many inaccuracies in government speeches and policies and statements, uh, generally speaking, it only proves the point that this probably is a government list. Uh, the, the situation, yeah, I've, I've already mentioned what the, the minister said about keeping it secret. The Department of Land Reform is engaged in a strategy of secrecy. They don't want people to know. They've said so themselves. They have a list. They have identified the property. They don't want people to know. And by claiming that we should not make this list public, we are strengthening the South African government and particularly the Department of Land Reform in their strategy of secrecy. That's the problem. The, the more information we can get out into the open, the better. Mm, all right. So, Mr. Lamola, let's get your reaction on those sentiments as well as also the issue around the fact that uh, 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 Afri Forum feels that uh, the land hearings were a bit rushed and there were some procedural issues that he did mention there. No, I think we're not concerned with, um, with the form. We're concerned with substance and we think South Africans participated across the board, both white, Indians, colors, all contributed and everyone acknowledges that there is a need for land reform in this country. And I think this is a project that all of us must participate in and make sure that our country becomes a non-racial society. With regard to compensation, there is no country in the world where a market-based land reform program has succeeded. And I think we have also learned as a country in the past 24 years, as we have said, we have paid $54 billion and that $54 billion was paid to the previously owners who were advantaged by apartheid who were the white owners of their farms, so which means that they've again benefited in a democratic dispensation. So the, the payment must be done in line with the, with the Constitution. The Constitution does not say we must pay market value. The Constitution gives various factors, history of acquisition, how the property was acquired, the peoples. One of the factors is market, the market price. But that is not the only thing, and that is where Mr. Ruth is being selected. He only chose a, a market a compensation. It's not the only factor that must be considered to compensate for a farm. So when we move forward, obviously, as it speaks now, 
the Valuer General must be able to evaluate based on what the Constitution says. We can't evaluate outside the Constitution. So the evaluation of properties must be done in line with what the Constitution says. And in line with the Constitution, it can be market value, it can be less than market value, it can also be no zero compensation. So that is very clear from the Constitution. And from our side, we are convinced that um, the current process of land reform needs to be, uh, to be overwhelmed. Uh, and, and then we need to move forward in a manner that brings a majority of South Africans to have access to land for farming and also for residents across the, across the country. Mr. Roots, with regards to your international campaign, we've now had reaction from Australia, the likes of Peter Dutton, now the U.S. President Donald Trump. Are you not concerned about the impact, the economic impact and the investor confidence in the country that uh, you live in? Well, we are concerned about the economic impact of expropriation without compensation because we have learned from the countries that the ANC regards as heroes. We know the ANC has described Hugo Chavez as a hero. Maybe Ronald Lamola can now state that they don't think he was a hero. We know the ANC has described Robert Mugabe as a hero. No, we know the ANC has described Fidel Castro as a hero. So they are hero-worshipping the people who have, who have created hell on earth in their own countries. And they are actively uh, trying to discredit and try to attack the policies of the countries that, are, that, that have risen out of poverty and, and that have literally strengthened the economies to a, much, to a great extent. So the, the risk of an economic meltdown as a, uh, as a result of expropriation without compensation is much more severe than the risk of uh, economic consequences of getting international support. And of course we know that the ANC did the exact same thing in the 1980s when they got... Uh, when they uh, went to the international community to get support against uh, the apartheid system, and they succeeded in that. And I think the ANC and the South African government should not underestimate um, what's happening. The ANC has had this wind of approval for, for, for uh, decades as the party of Nelson Mandela, of, as the party of freedom and of tolerance. And within a matter of, I think, two or three years, probably, the ANC has succeeded in destroying their image as a party of freedom and of peace and prosperity. The ANC is increasingly being regarded as a totalitarian party, as, a, as an organization that, that borders on some form, or at least that's flirting with uh, dictatorship type policies, as an organization that would destroy the economy if they had their way. So I think the ANC seriously need to do some, some stock take to, to reevaluate where they are currently positioning themselves in the international community. Absolutely. And I actually wanted to ask both gentlemen, I mean, it sounds like there's two sides, like uh, two warring sides here. Mr. Lamola, is there any way for the NC to meet with, uh, of course, AFRI Forum to sit down so that one side can hear the other side on this matter? Well, I think um, we, we are willing to meet with everyone. The ANC meets everyone. It's a leader of society. We have met the council of churches, AFRI, everyone we, we engage with them. And we obviously want to engage on rational discussions. I, at some point, when I was a leader of the youth league, met the youth in the Afro Forum. So the ANC is open to engage with anyone. But what we do not appreciate is the, is the spreading of inaccuracies. And um, Mr. Ruth, he sounds like he justified uh, himself when he spread inaccuracies on the list that he has released, which he claims that was, uh, was, was also approved by the National Executive Committee. You can check all statements of the National Executive Committee, and even myself, where I have spoken everywhere. We have never said we have identified the list. And what the list came about, it was a leak on the newspapers and so forth. We have never had the identified site. There is no National Executive Committee that said and identified the list. The National Executive Committee discussed the principle that the Constitution allows for 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 for, for ex for when you evaluate property to do it in line with the constitution where you can pay no compensation less than market value or market value in line with what uh, section 25 through of the constitution says as a factor that needs to be looked at when you evaluate property all right mr lamola thank you so much for your time this morning so we have to release you thank you so so much for your comments that is uh, the nc's uh, nec member there mr ronald lamola i understand is rushing to court but we yeah. still have mr Rhodes uh, in our pretoria studios yeah. mr Rhodes, before we let you go you know your organization has in the past weighed in on race related issues racism issues uh, no doubt you've seen this video that's gone viral with regards to adam uh, katsavelos uh, what's your reaction to this 
Yes, uh, well, we issued a press statement in which we strongly condemned that. Uh, we have issued, actually, as a matter of fact, many press statements, and we've taken a stance repeatedly, particularly against the use of the so-called K-word and of, against white racism. We believe that it's something that has to be addressed. It's something that, that, um, that's not acceptable, and people must carry the consequences thereof. But on the other hand, we are also concerned that that uh, at least in the mainstream in South Africa, there's not a consistent condemnation of racism. So this video, for example, where a white person said something that's extremely offensive towards black people, it went viral. On the other hand, in the last year, AfriForum has filed 115 criminal charges against people who have called for the slaughter and for the genocide of minorities in South Africa. But that does not go viral. Uh, we had a recent example. We know the Penny Sparrow case, probably the most famous racist in South Africa. We know that just a few days after she made her comments, a, a, a government employee said that, white, that, that they, the government or the ANC, needs to do to white people what Hitler did to the Jews. And the outcry against that was not the same as the outcry against Penny Sparrow. So we must condemn all forms of racism, but, but we must be consistent when we do that. And it's Roots from AfriForum. We appreciate your insight. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, well, our question of the day is based on the current topic. Uh, what do you make of Donald Trump's tweet on land and farm killings in South Africa? Do send us your comments at the agenda underscore SABC. Remember, you can also send us your video comments and voice notes. We do have a WhatsApp line. The number is 081-732-8421. We're going to take a look at your comments after the break. Stay with us.